topic mass transfer rate limitations. Um, Tim was playing with a more macro scale model, trying to see if he could develop a model that would, might be useful at a field scale that would incorporate enough of the um, processes that we got realistic predictions. And we're not there yet. Um, and we think the potential for density plunging with these denapples, even though we're just solubilizing here, could be tremendously important and would have to be considered in the design of a uh, solubilization scheme. So with that, I think I just want to close on, with a few thoughts about how we might tame the napple and where we go from here. Uh, I'm going to focus the attention primarily on surfactants here because we've been working in those, those areas. Um, we're not w doing all of these things, but these are just my thoughts on what the important uh, things that need to be done are. Uh, <clears throat> characterization, that's a, a broad state word, you know. But what I was thinking of here is that you have to find the napples. If you can't find them, you can't remove them. Um, you don't have to know their exact distribution. That isn't the issue. But we do have to localize the surfactant treatment. It's not going to be economical to flush the entire aquifer with surfactant. We're going to have to localize. We're going to have to recover and recycle. So we have to find the napples. And, and that's probably no news to most of the people here. Um, there are a lot of promising things that people are looking at. Geophysical methods, partitioning tracers, um, even using surfactants themselves to find the napples. So there's, there, I, I am confident that we're going to be able to find them. And if we can find them, I think we'll be able to treat them. Um, then there's the issue of scale up. I've showed you here simulations that, that were discretized at a very fine scale. Do I have confidence in those? Well, some, but not a great deal. Now, um, one thing that gave me a little more confidence in it, incidentally, was Kurt Pinnell is working at Georgia Tech now, and we're still collaborating. He's doing some 2D, 3D sandbox experiments in the lab. He has discovered density plunging in a big way. We predicted that with the model. We had never observed it in the lab. He has now observed it. And it's pretty dramatic, and I really should add another slide to this lecture to show it. So there's a case where a model helps us to anticipate a phenomenon that we'll be able to find in the lab. Um, but there's a lot of things involved with scale up, and we can't really use this kind of model at the field scale. So we have to develop a better, a, a, a more robust, uh, less parameter driven model that we could use that would still be useful in a predictive sense at the field scale. And then there's heterogeneity. I'm not just talking conductivity here. I mean, we're working with pure napples. That's not a reality in most situations. Um, we're starting to work with binary mixtures. You'll be happy to know that they seem to be predictable based on the correlations we've already developed. But we still have a long way to go. And then the soil types that we're dealing with, we've only worked with clean sands. What happens when you get a high organic carbon? You know, I, I mean, there's all kinds of issues with clays. I, we haven't scratched the surface there. And then if you understand the phenomena, can you optimize it? Um, I was going around the country. Uh, Benny, uh, Bernie Cooper in uh, Queen's University in Canada has been playing around with the idea of why not mobilize, um, flush the PCE from below and hold it up hydraulically while it's solubilizing. You like that idea? As long as the pumps don't fail, it's kind of cool. Maybe we, can, maybe we can take advantage of mobilization. You know, maybe we can, and there are other ideas too, like mobilizing and having a clay layer protect you from you know, failure and, and then pumping it off of the clay. So there are lots of ideas out there that could be used to optimize the process once we understand it. And then there's always a tail. In all our experiments, if we look for one, we find one. And that's distressing, but true. You're never going to get it all out. So if what's left is biologically available, we have a better chance of, of cleaning up the aquifer. And there needs to be a lot of work on the biological availability, the bioavailability of micellar solubilized organics, as well as what the soil will hold, since the, the soil absorbs the organics as well. So there's lots of interesting work that could be done in that area. So with that, I will close and be happy to entertain any questions.